morning. If you win, you keep playing. We we start this uh, this event with the two guys at the bottom, Salamo and Devarno. Those guys are the first match. Whoever wins stays on and plays again. And if you lose, you are eliminated. You're knocked out. That's the format. KO format. Streaming challenge. EUNA officially underway. Meanwhile, I'm going to work on getting my superpowers back. This is EU against NA. And look, guys, we got United Kingdom. Would you look at that? Would you look at that? Wow. This is great. This is like a take your kid to work day. Hello, I understand you're from the UK. Is this your first time here? This is actually called Europe. Let me see, let me show you how things work around here. So 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 there's like there's a currency and we all use it and and so that means if you're part you can use as you can use it as well. But it, well, it's okay. It doesn't apply to you. But just so you know, that's how things work around here. Fish B3. All right, guys. This is a this is a you know a heavyweight matchup here. These are 800s. This is a heavyweight matchup. This bishop is about to say hello to that queen on D5, guys. Good position for Black says Light Rider. Yorch, how you doing, man? Every time I see Yorch, she's in here saying he's drunk. Love to love to see it, man. It's great energy. I, I hope you're drinking responsibly, and uh, I'm glad you're having a good time. Sounds like. Very reasonable position. Guys, no one's uh, seriously blundered yet. That queen is hanging, but great move. Queen d6 as well. E6 played. Um, guys, this is, is, is am, I, am I right in saying that this is like the best 800 game that we've seen? I mean, Bishop C6, I can't say that's the best move on the board, but dude, no one's down uh, down material. Am I cheering for NA? I almost want to cheer for EU, uh, you know, just to make the match close and have NA win at the end. You know what I mean? Sometimes you're watching a game, basketball game, hockey game, and it's like, you have your favorite team, but you're also cheering for the other side just to like make it interesting. You know, I bought tickets to this event. I'm front row seated and, and I want to, I want my money's worth. So I'm kind of cheering for, you know, those of you guys to, Hey, like, you know, actually score a goal or two, but you know, at the end of the day, we all know who's going to be victorious here. And, uh, and, uh, you know, it's just a matter of time. Hey Frank, how you doing? So B4, breaking up the pawn chain, not going for A4 and closing it off. Maybe Rook there, Rook there. Guys, this is like the best 800 game that we've ever seen in EUNA. B4 high IQ chess. Okay, so we had an exchange there instead of taking the pawn. Now this pawn's being hit. Black really, really needs to start using the light squares here. Rook a4, okay, I respect that, defending his spawn. Guys, this is a good game. What the heck's going on? You guys are supposed to play like trash. I thought they were supposed to play like trash. That's, I, I was informed that that, that that's what I'm uh, expecting here. I bought tickets to the clown show. But not at all, these guys are impressive. Takes, okay. Salamo's in trouble here. By the way, if you guys remember Salamo, I think he was like 400 rated the last event he played in. I think it was a Botez sub battle. I can't remember exactly, but look at him now. He's up to 850 almost. So check Bishop F8. If white ever gets this Bishop there, that could mean, uh, that could mean checkmate, but ooh, that pawn's hanging, but this pawn can also run. Queen takes F6 though. There's gonna be a lot of counterplay. 
This is going to be a lot of counterplay. That's right, Creamsicle. He put in uh, hours in the gym, you know. He was bulking. Is he going to take that pawn? Let's see. No, he goes queen b7. Oh, man. Well, now, now I'm worried about this pawn moving. That being hit. Bishop c8 played. Man, these moves. Bishop c8. My goodness. Is he planning to reroute to this diagonal? Go for mate? These guys have 30 seconds apiece. This is the closest game I've ever seen between two 800s. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. This is bad. He's going to go queen back. Oh, he's not going to do anything. He's not moving. Salamo. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, man. There's that 800 rating. I was wondering. I was wondering. I was like, dude, these guys are playing amazing. No, nah, there we go. There we go. That makes more sense. That makes more sense. Pass the Salamo, says the chess kid. Bishop check. King up. And are we going to see... There's so many. Oh, is, it, is he going for the repetition? Oh, he... Man, that's a... Jeez, he got it. He got it. He got the checkmate. He had, you know, two extra queens and a pawn and a bishop. So I think that constitutes slightly better. <laughs> uh, so it is actually the North American squad who takes that first win. Devarno with the checkmate on the board. Salamo says, Dud, I mouse flip. Well, if I had to guess what your mouse flip was, um, Salamo. It'd probably be this one, right? Where you play queen b7 instead of queen takes f6. That's the mouse slip you're talking about. Because the rest of the moves this game, they seemed uh, they seem pretty normal for your standards. Yeah, this all seemed fine. So you're probably talking about queen b7. That's unfortunate, guys. Salamo representing uh, the, the, the uh, European squad slipped in this game with queen b7. That's, that's too bad. He was trying to take this pawn. He slipped with queen b7. Man, that's rough. That's rough. Poor guy. I'll be able to start it. So here we go. Devarno against Daster. Whoa, these guys are coming out with the theory already. So Devarno repping NA. He wins. He stays on. And whoa, let me tell you guys, I have not personally seen... Dan, have you seen this theory before? D6, knight f3. Instead of taking the pawn, c5. Actually... I've, it's the first time in my life, but I've actually witnessed somebody play the Petrov defense Sicilian variation. I've never seen that shit. This dude played two goddamn openings at once. <laughs> and the Sicilian is such a good opening. The Petrov is such a good opening. My Whoa, God, this guy's, a, this guy's a legend. He just played two theoretically sound openings at once. He's got to win this game. My Whoa, God, what a legend. I'm telling you, I've heard good things about the Sicilian. I've heard good things about the Petrov. Imagine playing both of them. Imagine playing both of them. He's a goddamn genius, if you ask me. A goddamn genius. Devarno. Big brain NA stuff. Chat wouldn't understand. He sliced there. So we got Devarno here. Uh, wait a minute, what the hell happened? How did this guy play e5 and c5 and doesn't have any fucking e or c pawns? My goodness. This guy just had two pawns evaporate for the price of one. All right, so he's ready to castle. Any predictions, guys? I have a feeling, I have a feeling that Buddy over there is going to get scared of this pawn storm and consider casting queenside. It's literally 50-50. I should start selling tickets for this. 50-50, step right up. Fire tickets here. We go in king side, we go in queen side. Queen b7. Wow, versatile. Okay, I respect it. I respect it. He's hitting b2. Okay, b3 played. So this is an idea. Uh, of course, he can long castle. He goes short the short castle. Anyone who bid on short castle? Um, Feel free to collect your Dogecoins from the secretary downstairs. 
H4 play. Well, Daster95 is uh, really, really coming at him here. The, the H pawn, going for that trap bishop. So, wow, this guy, genius, genius. Instead of losing this bishop, he's actually losing this bishop. That's incredible. And his opponent missed it entirely. Ah, uh, yeah, and now that makes sense. Bishop takes E4, bishop takes G5. So that, that all looked pretty sound, theoretically speaking. And black is better. What can I say? What can I say? Devarno is uh, coming up with some of the latest and greatest from the uh, the North American uh, theory developing uh, camps. No, this is very impressive. Rook d8, about to hit that queen. He cannot castle this way, so he's, he's trying to force his opponent to castle this way. And the dude's got no cover. He's just completely naked there. Completely naked. Queen back to g3. Now imagine this knight moves. There would be maybe some bishop check. So I could see that knight moving to one of these three squares. Again, the time is even. Keep that in mind, guys. The time is even. This is a very close match. Actually, both matches have been close. Sometimes you see people just flagging, you know, speedsters, but these have been very close matches. Bishop d3. Queen b4 coming up, rook e8, all look like good moves. Bishop d3, by the way, gotta give credit to Daster. It is a solid looking move, it stops bishop d2. For me, the problem is this. That pin is, oof, that is really rough. Oh, but h6, okay, principled move. Principled move, h6. Devarno, he spent time evaluating, he said, look, h6 is the best move in the position, and he played it. And the guy who, who trusts himself to make decisive, uh, uh, calls like that. I mean, that's the kind of guy you want on your roster, you know? So Rook F1 played. Uh, unfortunately for Daster, in uh, in Sweden, uh, you know, th this move on chess.com automatically makes the king go over here. But for, for us uh, North American viewers, it doesn't work like that. So there's going to be a glitch here in the system. Uh, for, for Daster, he's playing the game with his king on G1, but you guys just can't see that right now. So his king's actually on G1 over there in Sweden, but but for, for your viewing pleasure here in NA, we've got it situated on E1. So pay attention, this, is, this king is actually on G1, but be very careful, that may affect things uh, as they proceed in this game. So we'll see how it plays out, but just remember that king is actually over there. White did castle there. So that's not check at all. Um, probably white's gonna play. Okay, bishop E2, interesting. Interesting, maybe queen B4, okay. Interesting. And I wonder, okay, Daster played king from G1 to F2. Now I think the position has reset itself, so we should be all caught up with the action. Sorry about that little glitch there, guys, but now we're back to normal. He played king f2, so we're all good. We're all good. Queen d4 check. Now we're back to normal. King e1, probably queen takes rook. What's Daster going to go for here? King e1, okay. Now he played king e1. Queen takes rook is there. There's, there's bishop d2. There's queen d2 as well. He's finding all the good moves. Devarno, what a beast. What a beast. Uh, sir, maybe, uh, I mean, if you want, I, you know, if it was me, oh my goodness. If it was me, if it was me, I would, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to tell you how to live your life, but if it was me, six seconds, oh man, do something. Ah, uh, that's me. They're both so slow. Do something. Oh my God, point one. He just has to move. Oh my, what the hell is that? Devarno. <laughs> he just didn't move. So slow. All right, there we go. Let's uh, head over to Daster's perspective. He's, he's the guy on a hot streak right now, fresh off a win. He's on mobile, yeah, maybe that's it. He was alt-tabbed or something. I don't know if it counts you as online when uh, when you're on a different tab. So who knows, we got him though, all good. All good, I'm just gonna say thanks to uh, chess.com for that quick fix.
Um, all right, so getting back to the game, it looks like uh, Daster is is doing that class. Have you guys seen um, Daster is is doing one of those uh, uh, one of those challenges where he only uses his queen to win. Well, looks like you failed the challenge. Sorry, Daster. Sorry, Daster. Oh, oh, Mizzo. Mizzo's starting the challenge as well. Only using the queen. Oh, damn it, dude. Well, Mizzo, <laughs> you're kind of in trouble in trouble now, buddy. Without a queen. Uh, oh, G4. Look at Daster there. Showing off. But I like Mizzo's position, honestly. Takes, takes, king, G2. I like takes, takes, king, G2. I think he's, he's chilling. This is a very... Uh, this is a very close game. The time as well. Very close. Mizzo goes for it. Mizzo goes for it. So it's not like this position is super special, but you know, he's chilling. He's having a good time. Bishop to G5 played. Is he going to take that? I Would I rather have the knight or the bishop here? Honestly, I'd rather have the knight. I'd rather have the knight. Um... You know, the bishop is probably just fine, but I, I really like... Looks a little bit close. I'd rather have the knight for maneuvering. Um, but, you know, black black can definitely make some threats here for sure. Yvarno, I mean, that's, what, that's the NA team spirit. He is down but not out. He's in the chat, cheering on his team. He says, go Mizzo, finish what I could not. Daster95. Ooh, g5 is, is potentially a rough move. If this knight ever gets to that square, or even that square, I am really liking Mizzo's chances here. Hey, Dark Vortex. Also, thanks to Karma Dumpster for the 200 bits. Poker Chest for 9 months. Slicer came in with 16 earlier. Dark Bone for 26. Corleone for 16. Big Evo with that 100 bits. Mertang GG. Malzeth. Uh, Saving Bomb. Regicidal. Thanks, guys. Appreciate all those subs. Uh, it was just a little hectic getting everything set up. So I missed a few of those, but appreciate that, guys. Knight on g4 from Mizzo, but, you know, Black's going to play c5, maybe. Uh, that pawn can be very weak on d3. This bishop potentially can come back to e7, and maybe f6 strengthens everything. So Daster also has a pretty, pretty reasonable position here. The pawn on f6 is very strong, says Mookie47. Mookie, that's actually a bishop, just so you know. Uh, just some of our lower rated viewers in the chat, they might not understand, but that's actually a bit. Just by the way, that's a bishop. It's not a pawn. Just clarifying. Um, A5. A5 played. Pawns on dark squares and Mizzo gets the open file. But keep in mind, pressure on H3 means you cannot, you know, do the full shuffle over. Ooh, that is approximately the worst move on the board. Okay, yeah, that that is the worst move on the board. Okay, respectable. King d7 is is what well, I don't know what to say. It's the worst move in the chessboard. It really is. C5. So you guys probably remember the. I mean, Yasser's talked about this, I've talked about this. Whenever you have a dark square bishop, it's really important to put all your pawns on dark squares. It's it's kind of like uh, they they say that that children who grow up in houses with no windows tend to to always think outside the box. It helps critical thinking. When when you when you're when you're a bishop on e7 and and you you just have no future ahead of you, you know, the the the, the situation is tough at home. You you really have to work harder you know, based on, on your environment. And, and that's what this bishop here is trained to do. So it's going to work hard. It's going to make it to f4. It's going to find a bright future despite living in a house with no windows. And I think that's a, an important life lesson to take away. And it, honestly, it's really nice that Daster took the time out of his day to convey that message to us. Thank you to Daster, honestly, for... There we go. More pawns on dark squares. He's trying to send a message. Tough love. You don't play king e6 there and c6. You don't you don't give that bishop any semblance of the real world out there. No. You you take that pawn on d4, put another pawn on c5. Lock that bishop up, teach him some character. Teach him some character. We're waiting for c5. 
to come in here from Daster. And as long as he closes all avenues of potential counterplay or activity or, you know, semblance of a, of a decent bishop. And there you go. Look at that. He forces the guy to take, and all of a sudden, you guys are laughing at that bishop. We'll have a look at it now. Daster is about to take home this game, and Mizzo is going down. Boom. Look at that. That bishop, with no future at all, lives to fight another day. And Daster95 takes out another guy from North America. Mizzo, GG. Wow. There we go. Perfect. All right, we're going to switch back to his POV, guys. POV action right now. Let's see what Daster can do. All right, classic opening here. C3, you guys have seen this before. DA checkmate, thanks for that gifted sub. Welcome, Rixon. All logical moves here, exactly, exactly. It's impressive. You don't always see that from the lads. Um, H6 played, okay, stopping this. Knight d2 is reasonable, so white's going for a more chill setup. There are a lot of ones where you try to play just d4, uh, but he's going for just d3 here. Very, very controlled. Very controlled. Knight b3, bishop b6 looks looks pretty fine for uh, for black here. I'm not sure I like this bishop, because now he can't really come back. That is going to hang upon here, but we'll see if a Mr. Antonio goes for that. Mr. Antonio. We shall see. Knight takes e4 played, but this is the second Canadian in a row that Daster is playing him. Maybe he has the Canadian's number because, man, that last uh, destruction of Mizzo and just, just exemplifying the power of a bishop when it can't move anywhere. That was really a, a treat to watch. So maybe we'll see another clinic on display here from Daster95. Knight takes e5. Going for trades. Very reasonable. You just want a pawn. Jackson chess in the chat can barely contain himself. Because it says, let me play this Swede. He can barely contain. He wants to get in. We got guys in the bullpen. Rear in to go. Eddie Barber says, better have Moj run over to Omid's place and wake that twink up. <laughs> you think we're going to need... Uh... Big O's services, Eddie. The truth coming in with some energy for NA. Don't forget, guys. If you see if you see a dirty mod spamming the NA emote, if you're a sub in here, you can you can get right back. You can clap back. EU supporters, you got that EU emote. You can clap right back. When a mod initiates the spam, it's it's on. The truth ICC just started it off. Whoa! 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 Chess Bay! 94! Oh my god, look at that! We're watching Daster 95, but we're gonna take a step back and go over to Chess Bay 94 with 100,000 bits. Wow, 100,000 bits. Congrats on 100,000 subs on YouTube. I remember when we were all psyched about 20k. Here's to the next 100k from Chess Bay. 94. Holy smokes. Thank you, Chess Bay. That means a lot. 100,000 bits from Chess Bay. And, of course, Eric. I don't know if you watched the video, Chess Bay, but we released a 100K YouTube video. And uh, Eric's favorite moment, and pretty much everyone's favorite moment that, that you could name in the entire channel, was, uh, uh oh, was Green Man, which was all Chess Bay's idea. I'm actually, I'm ashamed of my, my comedic self. I'm ashamed that I didn't think of it, but Chess Bay thought of it. And uh, it turned into one of the, the best moments in the channel's history. Green Man, classic, classic. So thank you, thank you to, uh, to Chess Bay for making that happen. And thanks for the, uh, for the bits supporting since a long time but thank you very much chess i appreciate it and uh yeah 100k is pretty special for us we were uh we were grinding that for a while but we're definitely not going to stop now appreciate <coughs> that a lot though chess bay all the support over the years and uh taking the time to come in here during a rowdy eu session and uh 
and donating. So thank you very much. Thanks to Chespe. And uh, what's going on here? Guys, I look away and all of a sudden Daster is just taking another Canadian to the shed. My God. Oof. Might have to take those bits from Chespe and uh, put it into Colonel Antonio's uh, therapy. Because uh, something tells me this guy is going to be walking with his legs uh, pressed together for a while. I think Eddie uh, Barber knows what I mean there. Time God, yes, Green Man. It's its, its own individual uh, YouTube uh, YouTube uh, video. So it's on our YouTube, Green Man. It's very, very funny. Never gets old. And we also included it in our 100K video because <laughs> it's just like too funny not to. Nice, exactly, exactly. King D3, no, but Colonel Antonio, buddy, is this not how it works? Colonel Antonio probably read a uh, probably read a textbook that told him outside pass ponds, you know, always win or something. Buddy, it doesn't work like that. I'm I'm, I'm sorry. Is he gonna take it? Wow, he takes it as well. He takes it as well. That is just good, good chess right there. Take that pawn, eliminate counterplay. Boom, that pawn's going for the win. Daster. Impressive. Here we go. Tarani, he's got that chess ball flare as well. <laughs> but guys, we're flipping the word. We gotta keep watching Daster here. We gotta keep watching Daster. Bishop c5. Okay, is he, is he going for the queen f6 line? No, he just takes back. Just takes back. Trying to see the new theory that Daster has been working on here. He's playing better. He's warming up. That's right, Flawless. He's, uh, he's very dangerous. Very dangerous guy. How do you get the chess bra flare? I think you can set your flare uh, just by clicking it. Like if you click on this, show your flare, you can click that, customize it to whatever. I think you do it in your, in your settings. Okay, so if you play this move, there's going to be knight there. And then you have to watch out that pawn is hanging. So that's why I think he didn't do it. Daster though, looking solid here. Hey Durkey, how are you? How are you? Hey Frank. <coughs> Tired, good. Well, uh, this, this UNA hopefully will wake you up. We got blunders everywhere and as I say that, Daster hangs a piece. Tarani may take out the dangerous, dangerous hitman on the European squad. A piece hanging is the first real big blunder, followed by the second real big blunder that we've seen from Daster. This might be it, guys. The run might be over. The run might be over. I think it's all unraveling here. No, there's no way he wins. He's down an entire rook. He's down an entire rook. No, no, he can't. He can't. Tirani, he's got to take him out here. Why does the chess bra count not have chess bra flair? Well, one of the main reasons, and I'm sad about it, Chess Bay. I would have it on my account too, but apparently, if you if you have like the the staff account or something, so the permissions that we have to start these games, you can't have flair. Feels bad. That's what I've been told. And I got sad. Oh, oh, don't fall for it. Please don't fall for it. Thank you. <coughs> Guys, That the NA, the NA dream is finally around. There we go. We're up in entire road. Guys, NA is definitely taking this one home. Tarani, whew. Thank you. Thank you for that. We appreciate you, Tarani. Oh, is that right, Chespe? Also, apparently our, our flare was supposed to be uh, updated, Chespe, but I haven't seen it updated. The, the Canada chess bra flare is supposed to be there. What's all this Montreal chess? That's OG flare. I want, I want that new flare on there. But I was told it was updated, but... I. Every time I've told someone to go uh, go select it, it's it's not there. It feels bad. But uh, I will go. I'll definitely go change it to the chess ball flare then, chess bay. 
I didn't know that. I was always uh, a little annoyed that I couldn't put it on my own account. King there, queen there is going to be mate splat on the board. I think Tarani is finally taking out this hitman from Sweden. Daster. Guys, what can we say? I'm sure that that European squad is going to be throwing a, you know, Kansas City Chiefs type parade for this guy because he did well. How many Canadians did he take out today? My goodness. There we go. M. Ulele. Well, we're going to switch over, have a look at uh, Tarani's perspective here. That's right, Chesby. Very exclusive. Very exclusive. Fairy tale time. You can select it in your settings. The flare and all that. Emulele from Switzerland. Bishop F4. Always like that Swiss flag. Square. Square. Square flag. What the F did you just effing say about me? You little EU bitch. I'll have you know I graduated top of my class at the St. Louis Chess Club. I've been involved in numerous secret tournaments and have over 300 confirmed checkmates. I'm trained in blindfold chess and have the best bishops in the entire US Chess Federation. You are nothing to me but another target. I will wipe you the F out with precision the likes of which have never been seen by Alpha Zero. Mark my effing words. Says Vic the Man. Fighting words. From Montreal, Canada. Wow. What what does Europe have to say to that? All I'm looking at here is a pretty close game so far. Where I'm seeing a weakness there. And, you know, North Americans are trained to exploit. Trained to exploit those weaknesses. Got to get a rook on D8 probably. Just, just gang up on that pawn. That's what it's all about. He did. Rook d8. Emulele still up a little bit on time here. We are seeing good chess today. That's a great point. What the hell happened? Guys, I host these UNA tournaments just to laugh at you guys and, and you know, make fun of your blunders. You guys aren't actually supposed to play good chess. Like, that's not in, in the rule book at all. That's definitely not allowed. <clears throat> so Tarani did something that I wouldn't do. Heads up to all y'all. Because you guys know how it is. You know, right here, this is a guy in the nightclub. He's really trying to work this girl. He's like, listen, oh, she's beautiful. Want to get to know her, want to get her number. And, and all of a sudden, you know, we got isolation. We got isolation. This dude tries to move in, you know, to, to take the grenade to help his buddy out. But when he moves in, all is massive fail. It didn't work out. Man, dude got rejected hard. He just got clapped and boom. She's rushing to the defense of her friend. The isolation tactic has failed. And trust me, it's a lot harder to get this when, when a friend's nearby. So you really don't want to do that. Uh, as you can see from the game here, it all liquidated to this pretty much by force. So you can see how that position, boom, just transforms into this end game uh, nearly by force. So it's a little rough out there. Uh, King e5, Rook b5. Probably go after that pawn there. It goes Rook a7. Okay, I like White though. Got an active King. Got an active King here. Hey Poldy. Yeah, Rook a7. I'm liking White here, guys. I know we're down a pawn, but trust me, active King in the end game is dangerous. Look at that time advantage as well. Look at that time advantage as well. Okay. Down a pawn on the queen side now. This pawn is going to be meaningful. Rookie six is threatening to win the game. If you trade that, it's it's over. Okay, is he going to check again? No, he's pushing the pawn, okay? But if you move that rook somewhere, you always got to check and take here. Ooh, is he going to go back? Tarani's got a rough position. He's got 30 seconds here. A5 again. Is he going to keep pushing these pawns? I don't know. It's hard to make a pass pawn here. Okay, he goes f4. It is going to lose a pawn, but maybe he finally gets his king out. Is that his idea? Or his rook over? Okay, a6 probably. Emulele 
You can make another pass pawn and then bring the king in like that. This move stops e5, so I, I respect that as well. Man, both people are playing really well, I have to be honest. And I'm, I don't know if I'm okay with it. Maybe rook here and check. Whoa! What the hell was that? Emulele just threw the game. Is Tarani going to be able to win this? He's got five seconds. What the hell did I just look at? Oh my goodness. King there. And is he going to panic and bring the rook back? Oh, h4. What a bad move. Oh, but he's so slow. Take the pawn. Earn yourself a draw. Oh, Emulele still win. What the hell was that? Emulele. Oh my god. He still won the game. What the hell was that? What the hell am I looking at? Guys, rook takes e6. Does anyone want to hazard a guess here? Does, does anyone want to let me know? Like, what the thought process was with rook takes e6. He's thinking, okay, so if I play here, the king is going to catch the pawn. So if I go here, that's that decoys, that distracts the king, and then I can queen the pawn. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep, that sounds good. Rook takes e6. I don't know what they're what they're up to in uh, Switzerland over there, but hey, it worked. That's the crazy thing. And Emulele is in chat saying, "Bring me another." Emulele, I mean, we got to go over to this POV. Dude, what's with everyone playing the Petrov? Hey, Grant. Grant says hype up NA. I agree. NA needs a good kicking. They need a wake up call. Takes. Okay, is it going to be Bishop B4? Yes, it is. We've got castles, Queen E7. NA has got to take out Emulele now. After that, that was just massive disrespect. Are we going to take? This is some theory, by the way. So, probably castles here. Put some respect on the NA. Ooh, I don't like this. Why? Because this bishop, I believe, is going to be very dangerous. Got e5 coming in. Reminder, guys, if you want to uh, ever play in these events, uh, you have to be a sub on our Twitch channel, but most importantly, we started using our Discord to run these. I think it's going to be a lot easier. Um, it was slow today, but it's because it was the first time we were explaining everything, making sure everyone got in there. But head over to our Discord and uh, connect your, your Twitch account to Discord, and that'll help a lot for, for joining these events. Just a reminder in case you guys want to play in another one, even for Sub Sunday, we're going to start using Discord, so get subbed and get connected. Get connected. Well, Larix, there is going to be no waiting as long as everyone's in Discord. That's why we're doing it. But as I said, the only reason we were waiting today was uh, the first time we've ever used Discord. So we we're just making sure everyone knew where to go and how to take part. But for next time, it'll be a lot faster. Okay, what's going on here? Black won a pawn, jumped out. Now White's about to win a pawn and jump out. This is like pretty much an identical position here. Uh, wow, I don't even know who's going to win this. It's going to be a... Most boring draw we've ever seen in the UNA. What do you guys think? Rook A8, man. Rook E6 to defend that? I don't know. You got to play a lot of defense, it feels like here. Ooh, that's not the one. Amulele might be going down here. Toos is getting a lot of pressure going. Toos! Open your eyes, dude. He just played bishop d5. What the hell was that? Rook there. Is he going to go there and blunder that pawn? No, he's going to go rook f6. He's guarding everything. But Toos is back on the offensive here. 
I'm liking F4 after Rook G6, G4, F5. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Woo! Emulele is is gonna be taken to a Canadian wind turbine right here. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! All day! All day, boys! Yep. Oh, buddy! Oh, you are just gonna be spinning around in that laundry machine. I would have just tortured him a few more. I would have tortured him a few more times there. All these pawns are going down, guys. It's extremely rare to win a game without any pawns. <laughs> Amulele has no pawns here. Hey, Strano Misfit. You really unsettled that Eric's stomach last night, so I appreciate that. Oh, no, no, Amulele, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. Losing a rook as well. This pawn is going all the way. <coughs> that is a rip. There's no chance here. No, it's impossible. Tuse, nice technique. Queens, because he doesn't care. He's going to get that queen over there. Oh, do not play queen here. Oh, no. Don't get multiple queens, dude. Oh, no. The stalemates are going to happen. Don't play queen there. Oh, thank God. It's a check. Check. Just checking. Anywhere. Doesn't matter. How is this possible? How is this possible? All the stalemates are for me. This is unhealthy. I have a heart rate. This is very, very unhealthy for me. What the hell is Queen H1? Where, just like what universe, what logic, where, why? Is this Warship? Oh, got, oh, uh, thank God we have. Necro3 in the chat. He says Queen A8 was mate by the way. Oh, oh, thank, oh, whew. Thank God you're in the chat. Queen A8 was mate by the way, he says. Well, let's analyze that. Queen A, oh, shit, that does look like mate. I didn't see that. Neither did Tus RR, but thank God that you're in the chat to clear that up for everybody here. You guys got a rematch right now. You guys still on the board? You guys got a rematch. What can we say? There's no winner here. This is it's atrocious. What chess is this? This is very unhealthy. I gotta stop hosting these, you know? Like, uh, I gotta tag someone in. Whenever I see Queen and, like, against the King on the board, I'm gonna tag Dan in for commentary. It's very, very bad for, for my, uh, for my well-being. I mean, just insane. Queen to h1. I don't even, I don't even, I can't even fathom the logic behind that move. Well, exactly, Scotch open here. So I don't know what's happening here, but we got guys giving away bishops like they don't mean anything. Nicola, I don't think, I don't think I'm able to. Guys, I'm playing a serious over-the-board chess tournament in Prague. And you guys are going to send me there with high blood pressure. In all of life, there is a rhythm. Knight e5, b5, rook c8. Yes. Some good moves here. Maybe this one. Okay, this one could be a little annoying. Knight d5. Don't need to allow that. So after knight d5, you'd have to play queen back. This is still a good move though. Uh, bishop b3, knight d5 now, still good. That's correct, chess bay. He's already uh, let us know that in chat. He was very excited to, yep. Going to, going to Prague, see you there, brah. So we will see Ali Raza in Prague. That'll be fun. We'll, uh, 
you know, try not to distract him too much. He's playing the uh, the top event, so <laughs> we'll try not to distract him too much. Chess bras are good influence. You guys know that. E6, maybe kick this guy out. Leave it on Tuesday there, Seth. Leave it on Tuesday. Who's that? The Saint. Thank you for the five, man. Thank you, Karma Dumpster and Lancelot again for those bits. Moj isn't isn't playing. Moj is playing, Eddie. Moj is playing. Omid's playing, and uh, Ali Raza is playing. So we got a full Chesbra crew there. So take a look at that bishop, because there is nothing good going on with that guy. Man, that is just locked out of the game. So I think you can just go back, because that pawn is hanging there. This one's a little more risky. I don't know. You're, you're giving up this pawn, but also bishop feels a little offside. I'd rather have it nice and safe on g7. Queen c3. So bishop here, queen takes, there's bishop takes f2. I think it's almost the only move unless you play queen there, but queen there doesn't look good to me. These are 3 plus 0 games. Two goes for queen to c5. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. It really paid off. Oh, okay. Nope. I was going to say it really paid off, but bishop b4 wasn't played. Will it now be played? Yes. There we go. There we go. Yeah, blessed is the Dan. Bless you, Dan. Thanks. That was uh, Joel Clementine who started that off. Thanks, Joel. Check Skype. Uh, how do you prepare for Prague? Well, as you can see, I host these tournaments and I... I it's really not good for me. So don't, don't listen to me. Do not, do not prepare for your chess tournaments the way that I do. Okay, Rook A7. And then we just push. We go all the way home. All the way home. You're playing at 1200. Take him out here. A3. Aquila! He's, he donates five gifted subs and says, hopefully no filthy Euros got one. Well, all I know is Panther Zero got one and Panther Zero is, uh, he likes to heat up chicken tendies. So I think... I think uh, those subs are going to the right place. Thank you, uh, Quilla, for the five gifted subs. Appreciate that, man. Okay. King over. You can take this pawn here. Or this is fine, too. White can barely move. He's, he's completely stuck uh, dealing with this pawn. F5, maybe? Otherwise, rook here. You can go rook here. After rook takes, it's you know you, you lose that pawn, but you do get to trade trade the rooks. That I was gonna say that pawn is being hit. You can try this, but unfortunately, you're not gonna be able to do it. So yeah, he just goes back there. He's got 11 seconds. He's got 11 seconds. Yeah, Emulele said, "Bring me another." Well, here's another. <laughs> Don't know if you'll be able to handle him. Takes, takes. Rook d2. He's got it now. He's got it now. Takes, takes. Clean up crew. Oh, twos. My goodness. Finally. Finally. He did it. Deuce has the... Uh, I, I agree with what Yanif said. Deuce has the uh, black pieces because... Uh, the only reason they played a second game was because of the, uh, the rematch. So... In essence, he was technically white for that match. Knight b5, knight a6. This is still some theory, actually. You can play c6 now, e6. Thanks, Seth. Uh, for the 525 bits, Seth ends in, in uh, 
Shreth Signal, a uh, single for 22 months. Welcome back, man. Dan plays chess, who is, uh, that was Daster95 from earlier. He's in the chat saying NA means neutered amateurs. Damn. That, that, just, I mean, I don't know how, how you expect, how you expect to, to feel, uh, you know, if you lose to a bunch of neutered amateurs. That, I can't feel good. D takes E4. This is hilarious. So this guy, they both develop like this. White goes, hey dude, knight b5. Black goes, all right, you got me. Then black says, wait a minute. That was a pretty sweet idea. <laughs> Let me try that out. <laughs> and I think this is the current position. Yeah, so he's just up that extra pawn that he took on e4. He's just up that extra pawn. Maybe f5 comes in here. Trades are good for Toos. This is a fairly even matchup, but Toos is higher rated by, uh, you know, about, about 200 points. Ooh. TL Rider, this looks rough. That pawn is gonna be going right down the board. This is a London system, but for black, exactly. Uh, I know it might look weird, but I actually do like that move. F4. It was a good try. If white can trade this, go rookie one, queen f4, play in the dark squares, I think he has a good chance. I really do. Okay, black decides to take. I would play queen takes. There there are some moves in the position for black, but there's not much you can do about that. Not much you can do about that. Rook d1. So black, I think, missed a chance to play queen b6. Instead, here, I would go like queen f4 and try to play on the uh, dark squares. Hey, I like that move. TL Rider. He's fighting. Time is even. And that's just a blunder from Toos. That is just a, a stone cold blunder. And all of a sudden, just like that, TL Rider is better. Better. See, Sean. Hopefully, come back while we're still live here, buddy. Man, what the hell? TL Rider is just better now. Toos! This guy's a walking heart attack. Rook D2. Guarding everything. I mean, black can put all those pawns like that. He can try to reroute this bishop, but man. Okay, he reroutes it now. But queen takes F5, man. You can't be playing that. Queen C7, there's stuff being missed all over the place. Oh, don't play this. That doesn't work. That's not a tactic. You have rook back to uh, f8 there. Eric was streaming I think at like 6 a.m. So he was still up. <laughs> he barely got to bed before the stream started. The UNA stream this morning. So I'm liking what Toos is doing. Uh, I haven't liked the last couple moves. It's just been crazy blunders by both sides. But Toos somehow did get all the control of the light squares. So he's doing well here. He's doing well here. Okay, h3 is a great move. I, I think black should follow suit with h6. Uh, f4 is super strong. I mean, it's just crushing, but uh, h6 is just a nice, safe move to play. I really do think these moves should be played more often. He's going. He's going for F2, so it takes, you can actually take with the pawn. And if I take here, there's F2. Ooh, this is a nasty move. Okay, he decides to just take back, but ooh, he keeps missing this. There we go, he finally saw it. Toos! Hey cuz, fair enough, you know. Is he gonna play this? No, he's just gonna take and take. That's what I like to see from Toos. Let's go, buddy. Toos, it all worked out in the end. Yep, push him, baby. Push him, baby. Black Pawn Martyr says Toos is gonna mess it up. What do you guys think? I think Toos has it in him. 
B3, let's go. Push him, baby. Let's give a check. There we go. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, there's, there's pawns on the board. Can't, he can't stale me. Check, check, check. Oh, he won't even need the third check. There we go. Toos. Toos RR. Getting it done for Team North America. There we go. TL Riders eliminated. Toos is taking care of some business here. Who do we have next? Is you are Komodo 9. That there he is. All right. Toos. He's still going. It is now neck and neck in the NA against EU battle. Guys, we're getting up to the heavy hitters. We are getting up to the heavy hitters. We got big squads today. Big squads today. We got some uh, real serious 2,000 plus. What the heck? I'm just talking about, I'm trying to announce the, I'm like, hey, we got, you know, a close match. And then, boom, I'm looking at this and it's just dead lost. You are Komodo is just absolutely taking twos to the shed here. He's already up a clean exchange. Clean exchange. I think you can play this because if knight takes, you are trapped in there. C4, Rook C5. I gotta say, this is really strange, but it might work. <laughs> what the heck is that move? Rook G4, this guy's on some technology. Toos is definitely, definitely got some technology here. Don't know what that move is, but look, I respect it. The Discord chats are very lit right now. The Discord chat for NA and EU. So inside, I'm in both rooms, but if you're on one of the teams, you can only be in one room. So in the European chat, they're making fun of the, the North Americans and cheering on their team. And in the North American chat, they're making fun of North Americans and cheering on their team. So it actually doesn't matter what chat you're in. It, it looks like it, it looks like everyone's making fun of the same people. So if you want to get in there for some good uh, NA banter, you know, just pick a room, doesn't matter. Sounds about right. EU, yeah. EU is uh, has a much different vibe going on. Meanwhile, guys, we can't, uh, can't help but notice that UR Komodo is really, really putting a number on uh, Toos right here. This is looking really good. This is looking really good. Rook d1, probably bishop here. Uh, you can grab that pawn then um, as black. You can also play b6, lots and lots of good moves. Sure, you can go there, bishop f2, maybe rook b1. Ooh, trying to get a little fancy there. After a4, rook there, bishop e1. Tus is, is struggling, you gotta give it to him, but man, uh, UR Komodo is playing well. He, his rook has been attacked so many times by knights and bishops and everything. And dude is like trying not to lose a piece so badly. That's the easiest right there. There we go. He found it. Guys, it looks like you are Komodo is going to take him out here. S. Collins, uh, thanks for the reset there. Two months. Toos. 
Wish I could say you have a chance here, bud, but I don't see it. I don't see it happening. I don't see it happening. Queen is out. Oof. Oof. Bishop Jack or King up, followed by the mate. Oof. You are Komodo. Yeah, that's that's unfortunate. They, I think there was some glimmer of hope there. We're like, oh yeah, we're gonna get our stalemate in. No, no, no these guys from Europe. <laughs> they don't do that. <laughs> they don't mess around here. There we go. This is a big match. It's been fairly even so far. You are Komodo. Uh, Eden, Bishop H6, you guys make sure you are logged on to, uh, to chess.com live. We've got spicy name swag, fairy tale time. Again, make sure you guys are in live chess, chess.com slash live. Bishop B3, probably want to get an H3 in, but that's that's a nice annoying move there to stop that. And he wants to get the knight into G4, it looks like. Takes, takes. So this move, there's Bishop G1, fall by H3, which is actually quite nice. Yeah, this, this works out really nicely, I think, for white. Ooh, those are a lot of dark squares being given up. So he takes... And I would just get that knight in, basically. Knight d5 can be played with a huge threat, of course. Uh, knight c2 is a threat here, so don't forget that, because white cannot take the knight, otherwise pawn takes just wins for black. Okay. So, I don't know how to feel about this just yet. White is going to have a lot of compensation. A lot of compensation here. But black is up a pawn. Who would you rather be here? I, I'm trying to think. I feel like in a blitz game, maybe you could take white. Although, objectively, there's no question. Black is better. Up a pawn here. Should be good. Oh, Alexis here. Thanks uh, for the prime. Andy is Yoda. Thanks for the 13 months, man. Sorry I missed that. I uh, appreciate the uh, well wishes. Yeah, the 100k, man. We're just trying to follow you. Just trying to follow you. Knight e4 played. Again, the time is very even. I swear you guys are playing better today. What's going on? I would play rookie one. Just get over there. You guys are playing better. That's for sure. Ooh, there's some options here, but nothing. Man, what a weird move. Knight there, if queen takes. Not only is there queen d5. So knight takes here is what you want to play, but after queen takes, knight there is not even work. He goes king there. Holy smokes, rook there. Does nobody know there's a hanging knight here? What's going on? What's going on? Take this stupid thing. <laughs> Finally! So, he can't play this because it's hanging. And if he takes and plays that, then we should have that. So, I'm not sure that this works. Ooh, he does it first. He's threatening this, but white can deal with that by moving the king. And guys, I think you are Komodo is going to take this one again. That's now an extra piece. The dust has cleared. Wow. Yeah, what the heck is this? Uh, what the heck is this piece sack? Yeah, that's a good question. And 93 was very, uh, very creative. Very creative. Yeah. Some rooks coming up into the fray. Some knight g5 coming in for checkmate next move. That's right, GC Kings. A thousand people here to watch NA lose this position. Feels bad, man. So, Knight G5 is just 
an absolute KO move right now. Yeah, Knight G5 takes this Rook there. So Knight G5 is actually just like a forced mate in three, I guess. Uh, but I can't fault him for what he's doing. He's just playing it safe. Maybe he sacks here. Maybe he brings the Rook up. He's, he's making his job a lot harder, but technically he's still winning. So we'll see how he converts it. But Knight G5 was just a pretty way to end the game there. Pretty way to end the game. Okay. Black's still up on time. Do not count him out here. You are Komodo. I would say right now I still prefer white, but you take 20 seconds off the clock. Hey, all of a sudden it's anyone's game. It's whoever's faster. And right now, you are Komodo. Time is ticking, guys. Time is ticking. Queen f5, going for a queen trade. Black says no. No queen trade for you. But I don't know what his next move is going to be. <laughs> Rook g8 or something. King g7. Rook h6, okay. Hey, he's got some ideas. Oh, you got to be careful. This guy's nasty. Okay, good job. But he's going to take a pawn maybe. Ooh, he's taking a lot of pawns here. Guys, it's now just a time scramble. It doesn't matter about that piece. You are Komodo is quick. Is he quick enough? Is he quick enough? Black is playing some good moves here. It's all about time. 14 seconds to 9 seconds. Takes, takes. I can't tell who's the faster player. White's now getting some pre-moves in. I think that you are Komodo's the faster player. Yeah, he's pre-moving a lot better. A lot better. Yeah, no. It's just that... Uh, too slow from Black there. Finally, he learns how to pre-move, but it's way too slow. Way too slow. The pre-moves came in at the end. You are Komodo, showing that speed, representing EU. There we go. Spicy Indian swag. We're up in NA. Too weak, too slow, says Halcon. Yeah, it happens, buddy. Sometimes too weak, sometimes too slow. Sometimes both. How about the four pawns? I haven't seen this opening in so long. The only guy I know that plays this is Lafon. The four pawns attack. Spicy Indian swag. Plays e5 and I love it. That's a great move before black gets a chance to play that. Where's the knight going? That's the question, guys. Knight g4, I mean, there's already tricks on that pawn there on f7. I don't know, knight g5 looks really good. Maybe e6 as well. A lot of great moves here. Moskalenko recommends the four pawns. Uh, as far as I know, just on a slightly serious note, I'm pretty sure the four pawns is like more or less refuted in the sense like, yeah, I think I think Ding Loren had some game against the four pawns where he just, he just like dismantled it. He showed some pretty nasty prep. Of course it's playable, you know, at at other levels, but I, I saw a pretty nasty game by Ding and I, I don't know, maybe it's been revitalized or something, but from what I know, uh, exactly at a C5 and, uh, and Black is really happy to see the four pawns attack. And I would say that it's probably playable when your opponent sacks a piece. That is a great point, uh, Twitch Realbird. Definitely looks playable here. So taking and taking is playable, but I honestly don't know if I would necessarily go for that. I just have this feeling that that knight gets trapped in there. Uh... Hey, Omid. As you can see, we're just just about halfway through the tournament, but uh, you're, you're coming up in one, two, three if uh, if your team starts losing. So glad you're, you're primed and ready. Nice that big O in the chat. As you can see, Omid, we put together a, a hefty squad, Omid. So, you know, it's looking, it's looking like uh, North America is buffed up and hitting the gym. Bishop D3. Thanks, Floyd. 
Omid needs all the luck. He's going to be collecting luck uh, for, for Prague. So thank you, buddy. We'll add that to the tip jar. Okay, e5 played. Guys, I think there is very reasonable compensation that Bishop is going to be super strong. If Black gets these moves in, I could see Black doing just fine here. But technically speaking, White is probably winning. It all depends on uh, conversion, though. It all depends on conversion. Let's see. Let's see. Queen a5. F5. E4. Got to get those on the board. But you are Komodo. He's keeping the, the speed up. And is he going to get another pawn here? Looks like it, eh? I think that works. Chess bait. Go NA. Of course. Good luck in Prague. Yeah, should be fun. We're going to be doing some uh, vlogging and... You know, we're going to see Ali Reza there, so hopefully we can get some of that on the vlog and some really cool behind-the-scenes stuff. Um, and again, Chess Bay, uh, thanks. Thanks so much. Came in here. For those that didn't know, and donated uh, 100,000 bits. Um, you know, commemorating the 100,000 subs we just hit on YouTube. So, um, yeah, appreciate that a lot uh, from Chess Bay 94 Take care. Thanks for the, uh, the support today. Go NA, of course. Go NA. So, I mean, this is just hanging here. Unfortunately, you are Komodo. Didn't go grab that pawn, like I said. And now F7 is just hanging here. F7 is just going to be hanging. Oof. So, queen check is pretty much the only move on the board. Because otherwise, knight there is just going to hurt big time. What's he going to play? You are Komodo, he needs a move. There we go, that's a good one. But guys, are you guys ready for a smothered mate? Is that happening? Or is he gonna find this move? This is a good move, he finds it. That's a very nice one. Queen C4, fantastic. I know it trades queens, but he had to do that. It's a very good move, hits the, uh, the rook, blocks the diagonal, nice one. Look at that, Queen C4 guys. Who's gonna win this game? Damn, I feel like no one appreciated uh, what UR Komodo just did there. Queen C4 is just a killer move. Killer move. The turnaround, that's what I'm saying, G C Kings. No one's noticing it. That was a massive turnaround there. Look at the time though. Remember, UR Komodo knows how to pre move. Oh, Bishop there. That knight's trapped. Oh no, he forgot. Spicy Indian Swag is going to go down. You are Komodo again. That is a huge turnaround. Oh my goodness. He just took the guy's knight. He's got that bishop there for safekeeping. Oh, that is a huge turnaround from you are Komodo there. Queen takes h7. Sure, he just wants to get rid of that. We got checks, checks. He's got 10 seconds. That's a mate on the board. Oh, what a comeback. Damn, from down a piece. You are Komodo. Damn! But you gotta respect that. That's Queen C4, chat. Oof. You are Komodo with a huge comeback. I don't know what these games are, but massive comebacks all around. That was exciting. Damn. Hey, Maprail, how you doing? Al Hashmi, you enjoying that, buddy? <laughs> Are you about to take off there, Al Hashmi? Get, getting that last uh, tilt, you know, watching the, the NA squad uh, blow some wins there. Getting that last tilt uh, while you can. Could a GM technically join? Yeah, definitely. GM can definitely join. Oh, hey, map rail. Look at that, 3,000 bits. <clears throat> Thank you. For the 3,000 bits. All right, 94 just played. <clears throat> Let's see if uh, UR Komodo is gonna gonna lose any games because he has been losing. He has been losing in his positions, but man, the comeback is real with him. What are we doing in Prague? We're playing a tournament there. What's the current score? Well, Maprail, the way that UNA works. Uh, the way that we invented the format, you know, a while back, it's Battle Royale. So it's win or stay on. So there's no official score. It's just whoever's team or players get 
knocked out first loses. So right now, technically, NA has more players knocked out. And, and Europe has, has their whole roster still waiting. So if you win, you stay on. And uh, yeah, right now, technically, Europe is, is ahead. Queen b6. Okay. I, I like black's position here. Why don't I like this bishop, guys? Is a, after g5, most of the time, it's that bishop just gets trapped out there. It, exactly, Slomka. Uh, you really have to be careful in these lines. E3, I know it looks tempting to connect the pawns and everything, but you can't get, can't play E3. You need to keep this diagonal open. So you either need to go like this to have that diagonal, or you can't play E3. So Rook E2, rough move. Uh, I'm waiting for this. This this move just wins here. I mean, it's still going to be tricky. You know, you're exposing your king, but yeah, it should win. Lonely Butter, I don't think that's a problem with this format. Of course, the 2500s can beat the entire roster, but if we're getting to a point where, let's say, the North America board one is playing, let's say, a 1600 from Europe, then that means a 1600 from Europe beat, like, four 2400s. So usually, you can see what happens is either we get to see some exciting games, some upsets, some comebacks, uh, some big rating mismatches, or, you know, eventually it sort of evens out and everybody gets to play their, their rating level. So... From, from experience commentating and, and running all these matches for almost like four years now, it's a pretty exciting format and, and you do get some close games, you get some mismatches, but it's I think it's a good format. So bishop e5, again, the only follow-up really is something like this. And maybe white can try to use this, but if I was black, I would I'd really consider trading the queens off. So there's no... Uh, so there's no risk of, I don't know, anything happening on this day. He goes back. Okay. So some weaknesses for black. He's going to trade the queens and take the bishop. Now it's pretty much about the time. Your Komodo. He's had bad positions pretty much every game. And somehow he's managed to win. So I can't count him out. I really just can't. Thanks, Rigo. Appreciate that. Wolf Chef, thanks for the eight months as well. NRC, appreciate that. NA brought a, a thick squad today. Definitely. Look at look at that NA roster up top. So Europe is ahead, but NA's got some heavy, heavy hitters coming up. Rook A4, yeah, that is a powerful move. So fairy tale time, doing well, but I love what uh UR Komodo is doing. Getting that knight into F5. I respect that. Knight f5, maybe g4. Okay, knight f3, not my favorite move. I want that knight in there. But fairy tale time is doing fantastic. That reroute, knight c8 to d6 is great. Covers that square, gets into e4, maybe double the rooks. Fairy tale time is playing really good right now. And your Komodo should just be shuffling. You don't need to overthink here. Just, you know, don't do too much. Fairy tale time seems to be playing quickly. Hey, uh, Carol, Carol go 25-16, how you doing? Knight to f5, finally. That's good. Bishop d2. Okay, is he just going to go back? What about rook back? Yeah. Ask the question. Say, hey, dude, what are you going to play? <clears throat> Check. Oh, no. Man, he forgot. Okay, knight d6, g4 check. Okay, so he's going to go back. <clears throat> He didn't blunder g4 check. Knight d6, g4, maybe white was still in the game. But fairy tale time is pretty ruthless here. Doing a good job. I think that fairy tale time is gonna win this one. Check. Okay, bishop c5 is a good way to do things. There's, there's rook d3 as well. Oh, he dropped his rook. He dropped, he dropped his rook. Oh man, he didn't take it. Oh, that would have turned everything around. That would just be classic as elf. He always, always turns the position around. That was his chance. Oh, and he got caught. He tried to take that. He tried to take that bishop, and he got caught with his pants down. Nope. Oh, king up. Yep. King up. He can still, he can still have a chance to draw this. How quick is he? No, he's going down, guys. 
And it's gonna be fairy tale time coming with a victory. Holy smokes. That could have been way closer. He dropped his rook there. I don't know if fairy tale time knows that, but he dropped his entire rook there when he played bishop d6. Right here. Check, bishop there, massive blunder, king takes d2. It is EU against NA. Wow, that was uh, an impressive run there. Any stalemates today? Yes, there's been one stalemate. Don't remind me. Don't remind me. Hey, Gritty Willis. Don't remind me, dude. All right, so we got uh, Bosnia here. Checking in. Ooh, knight d7's a weird move. I don't like knight d7. I don't like this either. I would play d4 here. d4 looks correct. Rook takes d4. It blasted open. This is fine as well, but I, I like d4. Just open everything. Hey, Vila. Warchef just entered Discord voice. Yes. Monk ass. Oh, knight d3 is gonna hurt. Oh man, you can't be missing stuff like that. That is... Oh, this is so bad. I would play... Oh, I can't even play knight b6. It's a5. Oh, that pawn, guys. Oh, losing that pawn. I can't even look. I can't even look. <laughs> oh, pawns are dropping left and right, guys. This is not... This is not good. <laughs> Thanks, homeboy. Homeboy Denzo, appreciate that. We hit 100K on YouTube, that's right. 100K YouTube subs, and we released a, uh, a thank you video. It's our latest video. I'll link that if anyone wants to check it out. Exclamation mark, new vid. But uh, yeah, shout out to you guys as a little aside. Thank you for helping us hit 100k on YouTube. And we're still grinding for 100,000 follows on Twitch. Where are we at right now? We're over 99.4 thousand. So we're, we're on the way up, guys. Trying to get to 100,000 follows as well. So if you're watching, you're enjoying, consider following. We've got over 1,100 people here. There's got to be some people who aren't following the channel. It's that heart button above this, the, the screen. We like to run some of these matches, viewer tournaments. Subscriber Sunday, some late night CSGO, Fortnite, Blitz, Chess, Techno. You know, we have a good time here, but if you guys want to follow the channel, then I would definitely, definitely appreciate that. Thank you guys for uh, for the follows. I see you there, Mr. Stabby Man. Thank you, thank you. We're trying to get to 100K. Appreciate that, that guys. Um, what's going on here? So, I don't like this move. Guys, you gotta, you gotta respect your bishops here. Bishop on G2. No, you can't play that move. That's so bad. Look at that bishop. I think what's gonna happen here is this pawn's gonna disappear and black's gonna end up like checkmating white down here. I just have this bad feeling about this. Bad feeling. That's right, Pistol McDaniels. Following is free. So is subbing on YouTube. So all these free, free things to do that really help us out. H4. Okay, he's trying some h5 stuff, sure. But remember guys, as soon as black can play this, trust me, it's all going down. It is all going down. He's gotta be very careful here. 50 seconds to a minute and a half. Fairy tale time is in good position here, but remember, he had a great position last game, and then he blundered. He blundered everything. Oh, oh, there's almost some tactics here with rook c4. So he's gonna take, rook takes I think is a big blunder. And queen takes, I would go like d4 imme immediately, just just play it. I know it's probably not the best move, but just do it. So I, I think that, I think probably bishop there was eh, maybe the best. No, there was still rook c4. Yeah, no, maybe you had to play queen takes, yeah. All right, so I would probably do it, like I said. It's, it's not winning, it's not great or anything like that, but I think it's probably the best move. Okay, he's setting it up, guys. D4, oh man, take that pawn. I told you guys, 
Giving up that light square bishop. Oh, he, he did really well to trade the queens. Ah, dude, you were making the comeback. No. Oh man, that's just brutal. He didn't see that was a queen trade. Well, that's it. That's over. That's a loss for EU. The Botez Gambit, exactly. We're going to head over to Fairy Tale Times. POV. He's been winning. Fairy Tale Times is a dirty smurf. Well, I don't know about that. He seems to be playing pretty much his rating. He seems to be playing pretty much his rating. It doesn't seem a lot stronger than 1900, from what I've seen so far. What I've seen so far. I mean, he blundered his whole rook against. Uh, you are Komodo, and in that game, I mean, he got that queen trade in, but he was blundering some pawns there at the end. Let's see some Bishop H6. Yes, I think everyone from NA is secretly cheering for this move. Hey, Steely King. We got some mods here, buddy. Yep. So rook b8 played, he's getting out of the pin on the a-file, so white can play a b5 and black can recapture. Eric woke up and the first thing he did was come to chat. Hey man, that's how it's gotta be for you guys as well. Wake up, chess bro. So d4, I like white's position here. There's uh, pressure here as well as, as the, the rook. Although maybe I spoke too soon. I have to actually think about this. I think I probably prefer black now that I, I look at this for a sec. I was gonna say, saw saw some action going on here. I got a little excited. Eh, I'm probably, I think it's probably close to equal, but I think I prefer black because of the uh, bishop f6, some tempi we can gain, bishop developing. We're a little bit ahead in development here. Eat, sleep, chess, bra, repeat, that's right. Says Pleb Life, who's actually a sub. <laughs> Bishop f5 coming here. Am I really doing the right thing? Okay. White's got some uh, some squares for the pieces. This guy needs to develop. Open file belongs to white, so rook a7 can happen at any moment. That bishop on b3 is a good piece. And bishop e6 to oppose it runs into knight c5. This bishop's got a move here. Bishop g5 looks like a great one. Uh, Bishop h6 would be a little better. Bishop h6 would be, you know what I was looking for? I was looking for this. And then after queen takes, of course, knight f6 is good, but I was waiting for bishop h6 just to play it, you know? You had to get bishop h6 in there. So I was trying to make it happen. Do it! Oh man, do bishop h6. Do it, buddy. Takes. Oh, you gotta do it. You got, you just have to. Who are you if not Bishop A Who are you if not Bishop A6? Dude, just play Bishop H6. I don't care about this hanging pawn. Just play Bishop H6. It's in your name. You got to do it. You got to do it for the gram. That's right. Oh, man. Dude's name is Bishop H6. He's got to be looking out for stuff like that. I know Bishop F6 is a good move, but come on, Bishop H6, chat. It was right there for him. His whole life led up to this moment. What the hell? How is that? What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, he got the free queen. Now he gave the free queen. So, you know, Lannister always pays us. That's you know, the, the return of the favor. Yep. There we go. Oh, Mead. Big O. With the white pieces. There's that trademark London system. Remember, if Omid wins, then he's taking on uh, Alessia. And I'm pretty sure that him and Alessia have already had a match, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, Alessia won the blitz portion. Convincingly. So that's going to be a marquee matchup if Omid can win this game. That's going to be a big one next.
takes, 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 and bishop to d3. So when I play the London, I like to go, I like to go takes and knight e5 and f4. But this is another way to play it from Omid. He's getting the bishop out and there's some, some immediate pressure against that pawn right there. E4, okay. E4. Oh, Mead. E5 played, and, and man, are we gonna see, is there anything that can happen there? Knight B3 played, that looks like a very strange move to me. But I see what Omen's trying to do, I think. He wants that queen to move, and then he wants to take, saying, hey, if you take back, you're running into big time trouble. But the reason it looks funny, of course, is it undefends this, but it's a temporary thing. Omid wants that queen to move, and then he wants this, but for example, queen there, there, e4. That That's what I'm looking at. I don't know what's happening in that line. I don't know what's happening in this line. Takes, takes one of those. It's gonna get messy if it goes for that. Queen e2, okay, so takes, everybody takes. F5 here, it looks like the move. So there's queen h4, also queen d5, but any check, there's gonna be bishop e6 to follow. So I actually think, yeah, Omen's not gonna go for that. Goes queen back. Bishop h6 has a good position here though. Very good position. B6, yeah, I, I'm liking I'm liking Black's uh, play so far, but Omid's up on time. That matters a lot. There's uh, there's a lot to be said for a time advantage in EUNA. That would be a reasonable reasonable move. Um, Aquila, yeah, I think probably. I'm not scared of this. I'm actually I want to encourage it. So I would maybe I would maybe yeah. Allow it on purpose. H6. The knight is going to come back because if knight there, I think rook there, and that knight gets trapped on E6. You don't want that. So, knight back to F3. Rook D8. There it is. So I think black is probably doing fine here. Uh, but I have a feeling that Omen's position may prove to be easier to play somehow. Uh, knight c4, king e2. Okay, goes for this. Black should definitely play this. Yep. No, no, that king on c1 is misplaced, guys. Knight d3 check is coming in. You gotta go king c2, and there's some really good moves here for black. Knight g4, knight d3. Okay, he doesn't do any of them. I think Omen should be happy with that. Black's definitely a little bit better here. Whoa. No, that's not, that's not a move. Omid forgot that knight was there for sure because he wanted pawn takes, knight takes. Okay, we got that, but no, g4 is a huge blunder there. That is just, knight takes g4, that was gonna happen anyway. That's just a free pawn. This is really bad for Omid right now. e3 is crushing here. Takes, knight takes is a fork. Okay, doesn't do that. Ooh, Omid is uh, barely surviving here. I would go b5. To kick that guy. Okay, Black's playing reasonable moves, but he's missing some critical strikes. He's missing some critical strikes. E3 was just game over. Okay, if he takes, there's Intermezzo. Oh, Omid is, he flipped that right around. He's up a pawn now. Oof, big O, big O. What a turnaround. He's up a pawn now. Oh, but is he losing one back? 23 seconds for his opponent, guys. This is going down to the wire. This is going down to the wire. Okay, he doesn't take that pawn. Another miss, but he's going for this. Guys, I actually don't know who's better here because Black's about to take that pawn and have a passed H pawn. And if Rook there, maybe Rookie 2 takes? No, he doesn't go for it. Maybe Rook back? 30 seconds to 17, this is very close. Is that, no, that wasn't three times. I think that was maybe two times. 
Take that and take this. Omid is blundering a lot of pawns. This pawn's hanging, that pawn's hanging. Omid's just going for time. Omid is going for time. Rook over. C5. Nope. Push these pawns. But he's got eight seconds, guys. He has only got eight seconds. He played a great game, but time is a factor. Oh, the time is ticking down. I don't think it's going to be enough. I think Omid's got this on time. Two seconds. Oh, he's going to get a queen. No, it's just not enough time there. Not enough time there. And Omid is going to take that one. Big O. Shaky first game, but, you know, it takes takes a game to get those nerves out of the way. Omid with the win. Here we go. Omid, fresh off a victory. A shaky one, but a victory. Here we go. What's it going to be? E4. Is NA against EU, Alessia. She's streaming over at her channel. You can go watch her, her point of view as well. But we're here covering the game. I think she's doing some sort of sub stream. Hey Dan, could you just shout out uh, her channel? Mm -hmm. Alessia. I think she's doing some sort of subathon. I see she was doing like a 24 hour stream. Damn, damn, 24 hour stream. We like to see that energy. She's doing a 24 hour stream and she's here playing in EU NA. She's got the white pieces right now. Is she going to take out National Master Omen Malik? This is a title player matchup. And Alessia Castlin that way. Okay. Is, is Omen going this way or is he going that way? Ah. Tail between his legs. Doesn't want any smoke. That's fair. Omen playing it safe. Playing it safe. But hey, Alessia just got an easy position here. Rooks to the middle. Rooks to the middle. It's 3-0, no increment. That's right. G3. Okay. This is a nice move. Uh, 95, I assume, is, is going to happen. Uh... G6, Rook E8. One thing about Rook E8 is it's a little hard to play right away because all your pawns start dropping. So I imagine Omen wants to get this move G6 in or maybe H5 or something. Both sides should be pretty happy here, but a time advantage for Alessia is definitely good. And Alessia, I remember from playing a match against Alexandra, she likes the dirty flag. So three plus zero might be her time control. That's what I'm saying the truth. That's what I'm saying. Omid has played Alessia in Blitz before, and he actually lost that, that portion of the match. But, in his defense, that was 3 plus 2. This is 3 0. This is different. This is for EUNA. This matters, Omid. Let's go, buddy. Let's go. So, she wants to play C4, right? If C4 takes, takes Bishop G3. Omid is starting to regroup. I'm liking Omid's position. Omid is starting to get the mojo going. I seriously would consider b5 there. I know it looks crazy, but uh, I really would consider that. So queen d3 is nice. She wants to play c4, I think. Bishop g5 hitting that rook. No, so no rook take. Okay, so trades, but trades are good for white as well. You like to see that. I would maybe play f6 here. Yeah, love that move from Omid. Yep, bishop f4 there. Guys, very even match, but Omid's a little bit down on time right now. A little bit down on time. Takes, takes. This is a very tense match. Very close. Very close right now. Rook e3. So takes. Probably queen takes. Right? There's no rook e8. And white's going to play rook e1 next. Maybe h4. There's also no c4. Omen's got that covered. In these Karakhan positions, the end games are often, you know, very, very equal. Queen e6. And although white looks like, you know, there's like an extra pawn there. These pawns are mobile. So I would prefer white here. I think white's a bit better in this end game. Let's see what happens though. It's all about the conversion. G4 played. She does not want to trade that pawn and, and give black a, a three on two. No, she's trying to keep it closed off. So it's as if black doesn't have a pawn there. White is better. Knight E4. What's going to be played here? I think she wants the knight there. Oh, F3. Okay, she's, she's, she's locking it up. F5 though. Omen is going to finally liquidate those pawns. 
Uh oh. Omid, if he if he takes and she takes this way, that's a pass pawn. And if she takes the other way, that's potentially an outside pass pawn to worry about. Probably this knight wants to go to e4. This is very tense. A minute to 47 seconds. Alessia is up on time. But do not forget, guys, outside pass pawn potential here. Oh, G5. That is a killer move. I think Alessia has got this one now. G5 is rough because you have no pass pawn. There's no pass pawn anymore. After takes, I think you just take one of these or push. C3? No, it's not played. Oh, King E7. No, this is over. Omid is lower on time, and Alessia's got basically two connected pass pawns over here. No, there's this is playable. There's knight c5, but king f5. Omid's going for this. Is she going for these pawns? I think so. Omid's going for this, and he's going to push the a pawn. That's all he's got. He's got an a pawn. How about this knight? Is it getting back, or is she using the king? Ooh, I don't know if I agree with using the king. I think Omid has a draw now. I want to say I'm pretty sure Omid can draw this if you get the king over, but I'm not sure. Should be drawn. I'm, I'm wondering though. There are some positions where you bring the king and knight, but you can't take that pawn because you promote if she brings the knight to e3 or something. He's got 10 seconds though. Omid, let's go, buddy. Oh, he's going to get the draw here. He's going to get that draw. Takes and king takes g6. Oh, he doesn't see it. Oh, he's going to get the draw anyway. Five seconds. Ooh. Wow. Wow. That's got to be a rematch. There we go. The rematch is on. Omid now with the white pieces. And guys, Omid seriously survived a dead, dead, dead lost position. Dead loss. So maybe that energy is going to be enough to propel him forward. Alessia is fighting for EU right now. Castles. Maybe bring this knight out. Yeah, knight d2. This knight wants to go to f3, I, I suppose. And of course, the... The, the move f5 is the classic, classic way to start attacking here. Queen d2 to e3 looks looks normal. Yeah, queen d2. Also queen e1 maybe. Sometimes you go over here, but depends if Omid goes all out attacking. Okay, he is going to go e5. Depends if he goes all out attacking or not. Black can go maybe d6. Knight c6 as well. Can get into some squares there. Okay, knight to g3 to e4. So Ohm is trying to get into some squares here. Black has some squares as well, but her decision, she says, no, nope, that knight's not going anywhere near my position. I'm taking that. Maybe takes here, d6 or d5. I can see Alessia. Yeah, I know what she's trying to do here. Makes some sense. d6 or d5. She goes d5. Okay, Ohm is no doubt going bishop d3. Okay, bishop c2. I was wondering if that bishop would just be loose there. d3 seems to cover more squares, but he's gone to c2. Yeah, the truth. You were looking for white playing d5, right? Ribozorn, hey man. Cheering for NA. Like to see. You. Thanks, No Limit Fitness for the eight months. London Willow with the Prime. Uh, Derek I with the Prime as well. Rutger. Thanks a lot. Chess Dude Guy. I see all you subs and resubs. Appreciate that. Thanks, uh, Psychnom. Okay, Rook c4, Bishop d3. Again, they're very, very evenly matched. This end game, however, uh, is going to be slightly better for Omid. Slightly better. Just the space, it, it, it is meaningful. F5 is a threat. So queen there. I think you can take and go a3. You can also go queen c3, but I don't know if I want to do that to my pawn structure. You can also do nothing. Go like king f2 or something. Yep. And, and say, look, if you want to take, go ahead. These are neck and neck games. King f8, okay, king e3. Okay, finally they're exchanged, king e8, king d8, you gotta really watch out for this move. Don't let that happen. King c7 would be a blunder. This knight is rerouting and Alessia, very good, is, is gonna play, I think, actually I don't know if she's gonna play b5, you know, that gives up a lot of squares, but she's definitely conscious that this 
is the threat. So Omid is a little bit better here, no question. You got the space advantage, but hey, the time is also a factor. I keep saying that. A minute 40 for Alessia. Okay, that is, is a big commitment. She's giving up that square, but she's covering it with the, the bishop, and I think that bishop simply had to be kicked out. So I understand why she did that. At some point, Omen's got to go for f5, right? It's got to happen. This knight, where is it rerouting to? Where is it going? Here? Here? Where is it going? Tell us. Omid, let us in on your master plan. Does Twitch take share the bits donated? No, the bits. The bits and the donations, we... We, uh... We get the full... The full amount. It's the, the subs that Twitch gets some of. So, hey, if you want to support... We get the most money from, you know, uh, direct donations and, and bits. But the, the subs give you guys some benefits as well. So I always encourage people to sub if they want to support the channel. Subbing also lets you participate in events like this. Tons of benefits. So what do we have here, guys? Uh, Alessia's bishop just got activated out of nowhere. Okay, she's back. At some point, Omid's got to go f5. I, I don't know why we're not playing f5. Agreed to a draw. We've never seen stuff like this. An agreed draw. I mean, it's drawn. I understand. I'm just saying. I've never seen a match that's so close where two players are agreeing to a draw. I've never seen it. This is unprecedented stuff. Omid and Alessia are just neck and neck. They're neck and neck. That's right, Turkey. I know they're playing the truth. I'm watching the game, buddy. So I think, th is this the same line they played? No, this one is a little different. This one is a, a little different. Main line stuff here. Too excited. That's okay, the truth. Queen c7, again, very balanced game, king b1. Queen e2. I mean, I guess you just bring the rook, so it's really easy to, to play these positions with both sides. Pretty intuitive, I think. Flip the board, low bozo. We, we spectate from the person who recently won. And Omid did beat the bishop h6. We're spectating Mr. Omid here. C5, C4. And Alessia is facing C3, which could be very annoying. After C3, B3, Queen A5 looks really dangerous. Why not C3 there, dude? Am I missing something? C3 just looks crushing. What? C3 looked like really good move. Almost just going for the defile here, but I'm not seeing I'm not seeing anything special. I'm not seeing anything special. I mean the knight is a lot better than the bishop there. Okay, so. If you go here, though, you can take that and you get some nasty checks in there. Stuff falls. Probably don't want to allow that. Queen d5. So Omen has a d file. Definitely blocks better. b3. Takes, takes. If you go rook c8, that's the question. Rook c8 looks like a pretty decent move. Because if queen d2, this queen takes b3. But Omid's just going a6. So what's the idea here? Rook d7, rook c8, what's he doing? Rook c8 still, look, I mean, I don't know. Just see where the queen's going. He, he doesn't have to worry about rook d1. She can never take the, the d file from him for now. Queen b4. There's no... Okay, queen... Yeah, I would at least consider this move. Hitting two pawns. That, that looks very reasonable. You give up a check, but you can hide. Rook there blunders a whole bunch of pawns here. But then the queen maybe gets down there. Okay. 
Queen there is on, on tap. We're waiting for that. But now if that happens, there's Queen D4 winning the Rook. So this is probably to play Rook C3. That would make some sense. Uh, I would consider A5 here from Omid. Kick the Queen, maybe King A7. Do they hear the stream? Well, you know, they can... They can listen in, but I never, I never advise. You know, everyone's, everyone's fair play. Nobody listens in. If they do, we'll probably be able to tell at some point. King a7. Trust me, uh, I don't think uh, these these two want to listen in. I'm, I got nothing but criticism. So they're gonna get uh, low self-esteem listening to me, Kappa. C4, a4. Let's go a4. Oh, I'm just looking for more trades. A4 looked reasonable there. Maybe takes, queen takes C4. Because if rook takes, by the way, there's pawn takes. So you, you can't take that rook if you're Omid. For sure no. Rook B6. Okay. So now this is defended. Omid's given up pawns here, but he's got queen takes C4. He's also got A4. There are ideas here. There are ideas here. Big time advantage for Alessia as well. Minute to 30 seconds. Queen D4. That looks like a good one. Now you can't play rook there because that's hanging. Queen c3. And after queen there, where do we go? Queen b4. I mean, you're up on time here. Oh my goodness. What is going on? The the, the repetition bras. Yes, yes. A uh, principled re repetition, yes. <laughs> a principled repetition. A, grand a grandmaster draw. A grandmaster draw, yes. Yes. From one title player to another. There are, so, <laughs> there are so many moves from one title player to another. There are so <laughs> from one title player to another, yes. If they draw again, well, no, that's the point of Armageddon. Uh, I'm going to set the clock to three minutes for Alessia. So Alessia's going to have black. Omid's going to have white. Omid has to win. There we go. Four minutes against three minutes. It's set. This is for all the marbles. Omid has to win. He's going for the King's Indian. Alessia, if it's another draw, she wins. Omid has an extra minute here. Four against three. Four minute for the high rated. It's not about high rated. It's all about uh, what color they just were. It's about Omid having to win here. And based on what we've seen, Omid doesn't seem to have the spine to win. That's what it looks like. So I think whoever got draw odds in this case would be happier. Omid has been trading pieces all game so far. And now he has to step up to the plate and represent North America. He has to keep the pieces on the board, go for the win. Alessia's trading. That knight's going to end up on d5 probably. Omid is maintaining that one minute time edge right now. Okay, bishop f8. Fair. Probably h5 should have been played. Yeah, Omid gets to play h5. It, it seems good. King g2, rook h1. Omid's got a very nice position here. Look at that pawn keeping that knight out. Takes, takes. If this knight, though, reaches d6... You get very happy as black. This is still okay. Yep. Knight d7, queen d6. The time is, is sort of evening out. It's a minute difference. Back to what it was originally. Bishop g5, and if f6, not that you'll take right away, but that's certainly on the cards there. So maybe f6, bishop e3 or d2, and then and then black has to, to deal with this threat. So rook d7 played. There is no bishop there because of f5. Danger. 
Queen d6. Okay, yeah, this was played. So Omen provoked this. I'm not sure if it's good or bad. It's hard, hard for me to say right now. Maybe Rook there in knight d7. I just feel like you got to get that knight in the game. Uh, ooh, this was missed. Takes and bishop there. Is that winning? Ooh, Omid missed a, a stone cold win there. Oh, it's this is being missed a lot. Finally, it's played. Finally, it's played. But keep in mind, guys, that Black still can can blockade here. You know, King's gonna come to g7. There, there's still a lot of play left in this game. I really want to see that knight on d6. Honestly, if that can happen, I think it's good. Knight there. C4. So Omen's keeping the pawns here, but maybe Alessia can get that knight to d6. Rook f7. Okay, bishop there is going to hit that pawn. We may have to go back e4, yeah? Okay, Omen's going for trades, but the position is closing up. I think this is reasonable for, for Alessia. Omen's up on time, but she's playing very quickly right now. She's evening this out. Omen's going rook h1. Omen's ahead right now. There are blockading chances. Ooh, I'm not sure I like that move. Omid had a chance to play d6 there. Ooh, I wanted to see that knight over on d6. Maybe queen takes, followed by that. That's what I want. I, I, I feel like that knight there is good. Because that queen's getting in there. Ooh, this looks rough now. Knight h5. So you can just take? You don't have to take. There's lots of other uh, winning moves. d6 maybe. Rook d1. Uh, Probably this move even wins. I haven't calculated, but probably it does. There's queen e6. Time is evening out, but I think Omid's just dissecting what he's going to do here. Queen e6. Okay, wow, he's really giving this. So I think the idea is he wants check, check, and take. Ooh, king there is blocking the queen as well. Oh, check again, and now check. No, but but here, you, at some point you have to trade the queens, right? Because if you take there, I don't know if it's good to allow this. If king f6, then you take on c5. Yeah, Oma's gonna take that. This knight's gonna come back there. Oh, play a5, play a5. Definitely, definitely play a5. Good move. Still some chances, bring that knight to d7. Oof, I think the knight on d7 had to happen, then you stop rook d5. There was a there was a slim chance with the knight on d7. Somehow you blockade everything there. A very slim chance. Now, now it's it's now it's pushing. Now the pawn's going. There was a very slim chance. Uh, I really think knight there uh, it poses some practical difficulties. It's dead loss, of course, guys. But knight f6, there was still a chance. Oh, heartbreaking. NA is going to take this victory. Big O. Omid is going to take the victory when it mattered most. Oof. That bishop b5. Blunder from black. And Omid missed it as well. So it was just sitting there. GG. What a match. Uh, like I said, I literally had to invent the rule. I've never, I've never seen the likes of this. We've never seen two evenly matched players like that. Go head to head. There we go. All right. Omen against NPM. We're on to the next match. GG Alessia. Thanks for playing. Okay. Knight D2. I'm not a big fan of the knight on D2 in these lines. Um, whenever the C6 happens, I'm always convinced that C4 should be played. So... It is played, but that knight does a lot better on c3. So b4 here, and if you play b5, if the knight was there, you could take back that way. That would be good. So Omen should be happy with this uh, this line for sure. Okay, this bishop covering there. You do want at some point to play h3 and keep that guy. Uh, as black, I would go knight. Probably knight h5. Ooh, h3 is really good for Omen to get in there. That bishop is so valuable, stopping a rook going to b8. Because once you take rook b8 with counterplay, is, is what black wants. Knight e4. 
Um, yeah, bishop here is fine. Taking is good as well. Okay, maybe b4 and a b3. Almost got a really good position. Black should also probably play this for some counterplay there. He's up on time as well. f6. Okay, so preparing e5 makes a lot of sense. At some point, you feel almost got to do that. This bishop needs to go back. Castling needs to happen. After this, you, you just generally go back and takes you take back. That's how you do it. Mowgling Town, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Alessia farmed his rating. Well, hey, that's what happens when the draws kick in. That's what happens. Rookie one, b4 and b3, I don't know, there's lots of moves here. Rookie one, so yeah, he just wants to protect that bishop there. I like the game from Omid so far. I like the game from Omid so far. Baron Hausberg, thanks for the three months as well. And again, shout out to Ask Collins for that uh, bit here earlier. 5,000 bits, I do appreciate that, man. Hope you're enjoying. fish thanks for the 25 months so omid is prop i was gonna say probably gonna go here but i think he was tempted by this knight b8 should be played to hit the rook and guard the pawn now uh, i think rook a4 this idea but rook a4 also yeah i guess you can't take you're pinned okay i would have gone rook a4 there just to double knight b3 coming up yeah so a5 b5 and i think omid's position is pretty crushing right now Pretty crushing right now. Uh, Solitary Days by Maceoplex is the song. Lone Wolf. Takes, takes. Omid's up 45 seconds and looks to be taking care of business. Gakos, uh, I'm not saying you're up next, but it, it's sure looking like it. We got to have Gakos in the, in the uh, bullpen getting ready. We also got to have Descend nearby ready to take over should Omid not be able to carry forth. Okay, takes, takes. He's gonna be taken back. G4, King F2. And Omid is, is better, but man, this knight is not very good on F3. Black's gonna play bishop there. His opponent's making a little bit of a comeback right now. NPM, stick it in. Good job, buddy. Thank you, Steve. Okay, this is what I was expecting. Knight d2, and I think rook there, knight there is what he's trying to do. Yeah, I would go g4. Not that it really matters, but I would go g4. If rook a4 to do this, there's always bishop c2 first, so it's a little annoying. Yeah, g4, so I think bishop d7 makes a lot of sense. You're gonna play a4 after knight b3. Yeah, no, I, I, I like how MPM is playing rook b8. Rook there, I don't like that move at all. White gets gets uh, the b file now. Rook e8, so. Yeah, I, I just don't like that white has the B file now. Otherwise, I, I, I understand what black's doing. But at this point, guys, it doesn't matter. It's all coming down to time. It's all coming down to time. I don't know. Rook over here. Just try to get in there. Rookie one. 14 seconds. You got to make a move. He's only going to take this win again. Rook to B7. Black's just playing too slowly. You got to play faster. Got to play faster. Rookie two, stone cold blunder. Bishop b5, that's another another rook, another one. And when he finally starts to play fast, dead loss, blunders a couple rooks. Omid is gonna take this one to the bank. Big O, you done know. There it is, Omid, taking out MPM. Cha-ching, that's two in a row for Big O. And it's Gakos up next. 
All right, it's Gakos against Omid. And Omid's on a streak right now. We're gonna, we're gonna take a look from the boy's perspective here. Bishop d3. This is a theoretical line. Um, the thing is that I'm used to knight d7 being the theory here. Knight d7 followed by c5. So uh, knight e4, I think this may still be theory, but I, I, I think I like it for white. Bishop d7. I know it looks really bad, but at least you can understand Omid's idea. He wants to get that bishop out to h5. So white actually helped him out. You know, that helps develop the bishop. I think bishop g4 is the main consideration. Um, queen b3 is going to be annoying. Just generally, I don't know about right now, but you know, just kind of put some pressure there. There's a pin. But the idea is that, hey, knight e5, maybe I got knight takes d4. Bishop takes h7 now. King h8, I don't know what's going to happen. A lot of things are hanging. A lot of things are hanging. Okay. Played by Gakos, but now what? Now what? Bishop f3 is a big threat. This is a very annoying thing to deal with. Man, what a decision. Two minutes and ticking down. Gakos here. Mango Mankey, Lolly, Anthony. Hope you guys are still around. Descend, I know, is around. I don't know about Agent JL, Baruto fan, Chicago Dave. I think I saw them. I think I saw some of these lads. 95, 96. There you go. Some suggestions from the chat uh, played out. So if knight takes d4, first of all, knight g6, king there, and then what? Knight there, king there, it's still very messy. Definitely we can't take that, that's for sure. But I don't know what's happening after this, honestly. It's a mess. I think white's supposed to be better though, for sure. page five okay so if omen's playing this it's not a good sign for the position not only can white do this and just bring the bishop out and be better but a knight there probably also works looks like there's a lot of good moves here for um for gakos okay bishop there interesting Interesting. So black still probably shouldn't take that. Although it is playable. Takes, or I should say, yeah, takes, might even be this, but I was thinking takes, 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 queen e8. Maybe that's playable. Is bishop g6 nasty? I don't think so. I don't think so. Nice e4. I have a bad feeling about this, like queen d3, maybe queen h3. I don't think this works for black, but we'll see. We'll see. He's calculated something here. So... Knight e6. I get it. I get it. If queen there, knight takes bishop. Takes, takes. And if you take there, that's hanging. There's definitely a whole bunch of confusing stuff here. A minute 17 for Omen. Under 40 seconds for Gakos. Wow. Gakos, you gotta move, dude. He takes it. It's gonna be queen takes, right? Yep. There's knight d7, but this hangs. And knight d5, that hangs. I don't know what's going on in this game, but damn. I, I, I think Omen's just winning here. 20 seconds, ticking down. Can't, can't, be, uh, can't be good. Knight there is just a crushing move, but queen there is also fine. I think Omen's got this, guys. He's only got 20 seconds. Yeah, Omen's got this for sure.
Eight seconds. Three pieces. Omid. Only pulling out dubs today and made on G2. Wow. Omid taking out yet another one. Another one. Here we go. Here we go. That's correct. The truth. He was purchased. He was purchased by Yaniv. He was purchased. Yaniv came in with a purse, uh, a satchel of gold coins, and he tossed it at a young, aspiring Canadian. And, and you know, a young Canadian, he sees he sees an opportunity, he takes it. Opportunist, and he's battling Omid. In this case, Omid has been been sent as the representative to deal with the the unfortunate matter of a Canadian fleeing. And look at that. Wow. There's just no respect here. Anthony Antonasov sacks a bishop, plays queen h4 and knight g4 like he doesn't give a damn. Oh my goodness. He just doesn't care. Knight g4, oh my goodness. Oh, oh, oh. Oh my goodness. Oh, that was just Randy. Oh. Oh, that was absolutely Randy. Oh my God. That was one of the nastiest defeats I've ever seen in EUNA, especially at this rating level. Holy cow. Bishop takes h2. Just out of nowhere. Just bishop h2. Queen h4, knight f6. It's Omid's turn. There's no way this should work. f3, knight g4. Rook takes f5 and just mate. Here we go. More Canadians, guys. Anthony is representing EU. He's been poached. The transfer fee was paid by Yaniv. He's been recruited to the EU squad and what he just did there to Canadians makes me think he has no remorse for the motherland. He, like, he's gonna take these Canadians to the woodshed. And, and trust me, no one gets out of the woodshed alive. I, not the way he's playing. Oh my goodness. So Anthony with the white pieces here. Descend is representing NA. Takes, takes. Rookie one coming. Probably drop that bishop back. It's a pretty standard position, but after d5, no question about it. White is just better. Stone cold better. Uh, rookie one, 85, all good. But this move, I mean, usually you want to have that pawn on d6. Uh, keep that bishop open. Blocking that bishop is just no way. There's no way that that's good. I'm too new for you. Thanks for the 500 bits. He says, I thought this was a PG stream. Well, dude, I thought so too, man. Knight takes f7. Oh, some randy moves. Takes knight g5 and queen e6. Oof, just randy. Oh my goodness! Oh, just Randy! Oh my god, this is just disgusting. Because king here, there's queen there, and that's just force mate. Oh! Oh! He's coming for their families! Oh. oh my goodness. Oh.
Oh, this is that's the second worst loss I've ever seen in EUNA. Oh my goodness. This is disgusting. Anthony Atanasov, very talented junior from Canada, just became an FM. Well, pretty recently became an FM. And he's out here taking names. He's out here taking names. Oh my god. That is just filthy. The kid is 12. Yes, yes. He's a very talented kid. Oh my goodness. He's out here wiping NA. Oh my god. He learned his chest from NA. He goes to EU and he just claps our cheeks. We gotta, we gotta pay this guy more. We gotta pay this guy more. For next EU NA, this guy deserves everything. We gotta, you gotta pay the full purse. Whatever the transfer fee is. Trust me. Everybody, everybody is gonna be putting together money because look, he was saying, listen, y'all ain't paying me enough to be clapping EU cheeks. So he, he goes where the money is. He's a smart kid. Smart kid. We're gonna be, we're gonna be pooling money together to get him back. Oh my goodness. There we go. Chicago Dave is here. Chicago Dave is here. Can he take down the, the young phenom? The young phenom. Oof. Oof. Knight takes. I, th I can't remember. This is some sort of theory. Uh, I have a feeling. Um, you give up a pawn, you get some some pressure. There, there's some business here. I really can't remember right now. Uh, my theory is really weak. There's something about some sacks here. Uh, I can't remember if it's now, if this is good or not. We'll see. We'll see. Board flip. Yep. Oh, Moglingtown. This is just nasty what we're witnessing. So, Bishop there, where's the compensation? That's what I'm wondering. Whoa! This must be some theory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what I'm talking about, guys. Chicago Dave, trust me. He's not pulling this out of nowhere. What am I looking at here? What's going on? He sacked a rook now. What the hell is going on? Chicago Dave, he's trying to, he's trying to clot back. Rook takes e6. What's he gonna play here though? Do you take this? What's the line? I have no idea. I have no idea. Here, king king f7. What do you do next? I don't really know. Maybe you don't take that. I assume you don't take that, you just do something else, but I'm not sure what that other thing is. Bishop there, just like some chill move. Bishop b3. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you just develop here. You just leave that knight there. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I, I like the energy from White's position. I know that this is definitely a thing. I know this is a thing. Wow. Anthony Atanasov putting on a show, but Chicago Dave is trying to silence, silence him right now. So Bishop B3 looks, yeah, I mean, that, that looks like the move. Uh, there's also check, of course, which deserves some serious consideration. But yeah, I just felt like that. That's got to be the move. So takes, takes, and maybe there's some queen h5. I don't know. Knight c7. Yeah, that looks like a good one. Ooh. Okay, this is getting real spicy. This is getting real spicy. Chicago Dave. He's a he's a veteran in EUNA. He is a veteran. And he's trying to teach the young buck a lesson. Knight c7, g5, doesn't care. Bishop back. Still protecting that knight. We got a hanging rook, hanging pawn on d5. This is a spicy game. Knight b6. Makes some sense, right? Guarding the rook and the pawn. Very reasonable move. Many 
many have been blessed by the light. The light. So what happens after taking bishop takes? And there's also queen h5 coming in. That's the issue. Queen h5 played immediately. He doesn't even care about that. Damn. Damn. Look at all these pieces. He says he doesn't care. Chicago Dave's bringing in the artillery. What? He forgot. He forgot that queen was there. For sure. This is not correct. No, no, no. Chicago Dave forgot the queen was there. 100%. There's no way that's good. Queen g7 is reasonable. Okay, king g8 as well. Unless we're witnessing the deepest theory we've ever seen. Because the thing is, you can take that queen and take here, but Anthony's got the extra piece. They should be five. Bishop f6. Takes. Oh, there's e8. e8 is mate. He's got to go here. e8 at least wins the queen there, right? Okay, take this. Can you win something? The queen is definitely better here. Queen d4. Yes. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. What are these games we're seeing? These are nasty. Woof. Anthony just double downed on the NA squad with two filthy games. And Chicago Dave comes out with that? Woof. Holy smokes, the chest is on today. Lolly against Chicago Dave. Europe is down to the last two soldiers here. Anthony, what a what a good fight. Oh my goodness. He really <laughs> the things Anthony did. And then Chicago Dave to clap back like that. That's just that's just uh good good chess all around. Okay? This is some theory as well. Just mainline. We got Chicago Dave, Agent JL. I don't know if he's around, but hopefully he's in the bullpen. Hopefully Agent JL is in the bullpen. Knight E4. You know, there's always A5 is a, is a normal move. So it takes that. Lolly takes back. Bishop D6, so maybe E4, but then the d pawn is always a little bit weak. What was that? Alnick, 86. Thank you for the five gifted subs, man. Really appreciate that. Cheers. Wow. Thank you very much. If you got a gifted sub from Onyx, say thank you, buddy. Appreciate the gifted subs there. Okay, so takes. Gotta be rook takes. I mean, there's just no, no way in heck you cannot play rook takes there. Whoa! <laughs> error, error. Cannot compute. Trying to trying to mess with the mainframe here. They're like, yeah, you know, if the if it goes down, then the game doesn't count. Trying to hack the old man's mainframe. That's right, Pleb Life. Error can't hold me back, bruh. Okay, H6. I love that move. I love that move. That's a very important move. That is a very important move. Whoa. Not a fan of what just happened. If takes, there's d6. Does that work? Bishop there takes. Maybe bishop. No, bishop takes e5 is nothing. Yeah, d6 works there. Okay. Okay, I get it. I get it. At every point in human life. D6, this this works out just barely. I think he's gonna go there. Maybe F6? No, F6 doesn't, you can just take it. Hmm, maybe B6. Rook there. And then if queen takes, though, I think you can get it with queen takes. Looks like Lolly's shifting over here. Definitely like Lolly's position here. Not a good one for Chicago Dave. I don't know if he's gonna go here. Maybe C4 needs to happen. Just something aggressive. If Rook there, Queen takes, Rook takes. So he's gonna go 
Okay, I don't know about queen e2. So he just comes back queen g6. This pawn is just hanging though. Yeah, finally taken. Hello, Agent JL. Good to see you here, buddy. You might be up next. Chicago Dave looks like he's in dire straits. But keep something in mind. Ooh, I don't like that move. Ooh, 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 ooh. No, that's lost, right? B6 was really bad. Ugh. Yeah, this is gonna be over. That that B6 move was very bad. Uh, I get what he's trying to do here. I don't think it works. Takes and then King H1. Yeah. Don't think it's it's enough. What? Did Lolly just not realize that King H1 was playable? What the hell did I just look at? Draw agreed. What the hell was that? King H1, it's over. It's just nothing. It's just over. What? What? Oh, man. You talk about a European choke. That is... Lolly has won tournaments for EU before. This is definitely not collusion. Lolly is the biggest EU supporter of them all. Just didn't realize. Didn't realize he had King H1. He thought it was a fourth draw. Oh, man. What the hell has happened this NAEU? He baited him. He, he made him think it was a draw. That's what I'm saying, Frank. What the hell is going on today? B4. This is a great position for Chicago Dave. Actually, takes. Ooh, I would play G3. If you take, knight takes. This knight takes H4. I don't like that. I don't like having to take with the pawn here. So, so okay. He finally defends it. King G2. A4. Queen e2. Okay, I still like the position here. I mean, you can take... The, these positions are so good for white, by the way. Oof. Yeah, so he's going to push through. Is he going to go for b6? It, it feels like he almost has to. Oof. Oh, he's letting b6 happen. Man, he's just getting squeezed here. Takes, an g 5 maybe queen in there. Oh, I don't like this move. Man, this move is just insane. Blundering knight d4. What the hell? Guys, wake up. What in the hell is knight h2? Blundering like pawns over. Like, what the hell is going on? Knight h7. Knight back to f3. <sighs> Guys, I don't know what I'm looking at. I don't, I have nothing to say. Stuff being hung left, right, and center here. Knight b3, just hanging a pawn over here. Not taking the pawn over there. Hanging the pawn again. Somebody wake up and count the pieces. What the hell's going on here? <laughs> There's a bit of pawn hanging for like 20 moves. Take it. One, two, three. Oh my goodness. I don't know what's going on. I really don't know. You guys gonna play... Fucking knight h2 again or something. I... Queen takes knight c6. I mean, just the blunders. There are so many blunders. What am I looking at? What the hell just happened? What a ridiculous game. Lolly just offered a draw in a winning position and then didn't take 50 free pawns and then lost. Oh my god, what? I'm speechless. I have nothing. I have nothing for that. I have nothing for that. Oh man. Oh man. It is all up. To Mango Mankey. Here we are. Chicago Dave against Mango Mankey. And as always, we're going to flip the word to Mango Mankey. He's playing for his life. He is playing for his life. This is for this is for Europe. This is for EU. Mango Mankey 
Coming in with D5, D3 by Chicago Dave. Oh, Gilad, glad to hear that. Timing. Mannered Monkey from EU. <laughs> Mango Mankey, yes. The European MM. <laughs> the European MM who wears Speedos and has a dark tan. Eighteen months from Savon. Hey, buddy. This is uh, the all-important match. This match right here, if Chicago Dave with the white pieces pulls out a victory, it's all over, and NA wins the first match of the 2020 season. But it's all up to Mango Mankey. Can he survive? Chicago Dave playing real principled right now. This bishop wants to maybe come back there. What's he going to do with this guy? Okay, bishop back. Knight c4, bishop back again. <laughs> Chicago Dave, he's making his moves easy to find. Oh, you're attacking me? Okay, there we go. b3, no doubt. It's going to be played, yeah. Force that knight back. I'm not sure I love this placement here, knight b6. These pieces look a little funky to me. This bishop, to me, looks better placed on f8. We'll see. I like white's position, I do. Even bishop a3 looks... Like it uh, hits some serious tender squares. Chicago Dave can finish this for NA. That's exactly right. Kunisada, thanks for the two months as well. B4. Okay, so he's just going solid. He's going solid over here. Okay, and it looks like he is doing that. But H5, that is good for Chicago Dave to get in there. Yeah, a nice little bind over here. G6 is never possible. Okay, bishop, bishop here makes a lot of sense. And then rook D1. Ooh, I'm smelling tactics. They're very close to happening, but they're not quite in the position, I think. Can't quite get queen g4 because the knight's there, and this tactic isn't quite working. Oof. Feels like it should work. It just doesn't. I don't see it. Bishop there. If takes, pawn takes. Oh, this looks reasonable, though. Hang on a sec. Maybe take everything. Take this and knight d7. Does that work? I don't know. Oh. Okay, he goes there. No, but rook d6 now, maybe? Must be rook d6. Okay, he has a few other moves. I don't know. Yeah, rook d6 looks good. He wants this and knight e7. So queen takes knight e7 just to show the trick he wants to uncork. I think he's going to see that, though. Rook d6, to me, looked like the best move. Yeah, Eddie, by far. But okay, here we queen, you know, c6. He saw a trick. Guys, Mango Mankey is down on time. It is 30 second. Time advantage. Chicago Dave. He's got the queen there. Now you cannot take that pawn. The bishop is blocking the escape square. And queen d8 is a threat. Oh man, this looks bad. Queen d8. Knight e8. Is it going to be on the board? There's knight e7, but king f8. He's barely hanging on here. Resourceful for Mango Mankey. But he's got to play faster. That's the issue. Chicago, Dave's got a big lead on time right now. Queen d7, you can't take that either. Oh man, what an unfortunate position. It's hard to find a move. It's hard to find a move. 27 seconds is all that Europe has left. And Chicago, Dave is poised to bring it home for NA. 20 seconds. Guys, there's, it's hard to find a move. It's hard to find a move, a single move. He's going to take that. Probably bring the knight back to f5. Yeah, oof. He's trying here. He's trying to get some counterplay. But it's just not there. The chess kid is looking forward. NA is already displaying a sign of things to come in 2020. But it's not over. 16 seconds. We've seen a lot happen today. So it's definitely fair to say it's not over. 49 seconds ticking down. Queen D1. He just doesn't want any of that trouble. B4 played. Takes. What's Mango doing next? Hitting that pawn again. 
Probably queen back to d7. Mango's playing very fast. It's impressive. b5. Check. Queen d1. You can take that. Take here. Very well done by Mango. You can push that. That's right. You can push that. The problem is... The problem is... Although Mango's coming back here, he's only got 9 seconds. Bishop a6. Oh, man. He's playing fast. You gotta give it to him. That, this is as good as it could have gone. He is playing well, but Chicago Dave is poised to take this. He knows how to pre-move, guys. Chicago Dave, I think, might be playing from his phone. He missed the knight! He missed the knight! The knight was hanging on e8. This knight cannot go anywhere, though. That's rough. There we go. Knight d6. He knows how to pre-move, guys. The knight can be very dangerous here. I think Chicago Dave is playing from his phone, and he's not going to be able to take these pawns. Mango Mankey is going to take this victory. I like the knight here. Oh, man. The knight is dangerous. Europe has got... What a comeback by Europe. And he's done it. Mango Mankey, he's turned it all around. He's turned it all around. The pre-moves, the speed. Europe is staying in this battle. And they are not going down. Oh my goodness. Chicago Dave. Chicago Dave. The speed by EU to stay in the match. Unbelievable. We're, we're focusing on Mango Mankey's perspective. He's fighting for his life here. Wow. What a comeback. Flenner. That's Chicago Dave in the chat. He says, I'm just old and slow. What can I say? I think NA is proud of you, buddy. Some nice games. Especially nice game against Anthony. That kid was going to take us all out. But what can he say? He's old and slow, but... What? Blunders? What's going on here? No, not a blunder. Oof. Just got scared for a sec. Knight back to c6? Okay. It's just a normal game. Chicago Dave. GG's, buddy. He did a good job. And what's going on here? Takes a knight c3. Interesting endgame. I have to say... It's probably very, very balanced. Um, who do I prefer? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's actually very close. Pro yeah, seriously. Very balanced endgame. Very balanced endgame. So he's going to put that knight there. If a5, he's, he can always take it. Agent JL wants to develop. Maybe bishop g4. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Oof. This is a tough move to face. Bishop g4. He's got a castle. Yeah, but this bishop is... Ooh, that's a very strong piece. Rook d2 coming in. Agent JL definitely has the upper hand here. Mango Mankey. Guys, he has pulled off the insane already. So, do not... <laughs> I can't even begin to count him out. Agent is penetrating though. Absolutely, Johnny. We got bishop on f3. And these pawns are very hard to mobilize. Bishop f3 is super, super strong here. h5, h4 maybe... The king is stuck. Knight a6. Well, this... Okay, bishop there. So is he going to try this? No, then, then just rook takes. Very tough position. He's got to play this move almost. I think he has to. Remember, if that rook leaves the back rank, checkmate in one. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. If he takes, maybe you can get away with this as white. So king d6. That looks like an extremely strong move from agent. F4. Why is he doing that, guys? You might think it's crazy. He's doing that so that he's not getting mated. It just It's almost one of those moves you just have to do. I know it doesn't look good. So knight c7 is playable. But I can just take here. Knight check. I got king e7. Rook there. He wants this check. Uh, up on time as well. Mango Mankey has to win. I mean, he did the unthinkable last game, but he's got to do it one more time. And yes, Agent JL is going to be a difficult guy to flag. Oof, guys, E3 is coming in. Agent JL is looking comfy here. That knight is completely trapped because it's guarding the rook. And we're going to see Bishop F3 and checkmate on the board. Omid is already saying GG's in the chat. Agent JL is looking comfy. This is looking like just a stone cold crush. Bishop there. Rook takes h2. 
There's going to be a mate here somewhere. Okay, so. There is no E2. We have this one to save the pawn, but there is no E2 at the moment. Check there and there. Yeah, that'll... That'll maybe do it. This one. This one, okay, you can win the pawn. That looks pretty good as well. Rook H1. Finds it. Finds it. Agent JL. I think it's fair to say he's got this, but let's wait and see. The knight on A6 is just so bad, guys. It's so bad. He might even play <laughs> knight C5 and OP pre moves it. There's nothing there. He's out. Mango Mankey did his best. Y you gotta shout out that insane last performance from Mango Mankey. Oh my goodness. Crazy. Mango Mankey kept EU alive when we thought they never would. But North America reigns supreme. Mango Mankey is eliminated and Agent JL brings it on Baruto fan. Sitting on top of his throne there wasn't even needed. What an incredible, incredible display today. I mean, what are the highlights? We had Omid and, and Alessia just drawing game after game. We had to construct a new rule. We had an Armageddon match. I mean, we had insane tactics. Anthony Atanasov just brought two of the, the nastiest wins that we've ever seen in the competition. Chicago Dave responded in kind. Took out a lot of the EU heavy hitters. Omid went on a nasty streak at least three games in a row. Once he got past Alessia, Omid found his groove. Omid was here. Gold Threads, thanks for the three gifted subs. Man, some, some serious highlights today.